Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head to Japan and we're going to have a look at a beer that I think will be really quite interesting. So this is one of my favourite beer styles and it's also from a brewery that I've never encountered before and those always tend to make for some really interesting reviews. So for this one then we are going to head to Ehime Prefecture, Ehime Ken and that is on Shikoku Island, Shikoku Jima and we're going to have a little look then at Umenishi Yamakawa for the first time and this particular beer is the Umenishiki Bok which comes in at 7% ABV and from what I understand this one is a German style Doppelbock which as I said is one of my favourite beer styles and um, you know having lived in Germany it's one that I became really quite familiar with and I just really really enjoy trying different Doppelbocks from different places. If memory serves me correctly this may well be the first Doppelbock that I've had from Japan actually so I'm really curious to see how it turns out in that regard because the Japanese craft beers tend to be really quite interesting and what you'll find is that a lot of the, the little Jibiru breweries that started up in the mid-1990s quite a lot of them were brewing German beer styles and they've, some of them have got pretty damn good at it I have to say as well but so really looking forward to this one this is yet another beer that was recommended to me by my good friend Koji at liquor shop Asahiya in Taishibashi Yamaichi in Osaka so I'll put the link to his Facebook page in the description below and you can see all the different beers that he gets he always posts them up on Facebook and Instagram Instagram and stuff like that so do make sure you, you check him out that's where I get all of these Japanese beers usually that I review for you on the channel as well as some just in local shops and stuff like this but really looking forward to trying this one and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer so anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the future from Umanishiki Yamaka our very first time I'm encountering them like I said there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county prefecture whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlists of beers from different countries there is one there for all the Japanese beers that I've reviewed for you that's being added to fairly regularly and whenever I get the opportunity and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Umenishiki Yamakawa then. So this brewery is, it started originally as part of the Umenishiki Yamakawa Company, which is a sake brewery that dates back to 1872, just after the Meiji Restoration, when the Meiji family took over the chrysanthemum throne in Japan. So the brewery can be found in the Kanidacho area of Shikoku Cho city which is kind of in the northeastern corner of Ehime prefecture on Shikoku Island in Japan. Shikoku Island incidentally if you go to where Osaka is it's that little island that just kind of sits um, across the bay if you like a little bit from um, from uh, Wakayama so it's just it's that little island that's not Kyushu in the bottom it's the one just a little bit north of that just to kind of describe where it is but this company basically passed down the generations of the Yamakawa family and it became very decorated and respected over the years winning various awards at different periods in its history and um, over the years it also went the company underwent some structural changes and things like that but since 2016 Umenishiki Yamakawa is owned by the Hakatsuro Shuzo company who are one of the big sake breweries from Kobe they're quite a famous company as well actually apparently they are the biggest selling um, sake brand in, uh, in Japan which I didn't know actually so hopefully I can review a sake from both uh, Umenishiki Yamakawa at some point and also Hakatsuro Shuzo as well I've never tried anything from them but to basically to go on to the beer side of things then um, these guys received their license to brew beer and they registered the beer company back in 1995 after the laws in Japan were liberalised so they ordered their brewing equipment from Kirin Engineering and they quickly built a brewery building um, and in the beginning they were helped by a German brewer to get things going and the two first beers that they produced were a Pilsner beer and then this one at the Bok. So the brewery is basically in the middle of the countryside and it was originally called the Umenishiki Garden Timbara Brewery but they had a hop garden there, they grew various different fruits and things like that as well. This opened up in 1996 and they had an on-site restaurant there as well which apparently stayed open until 2005 but then it was closed and now they just simply focus on brewing beer. But as of October 2019 when I'm filming this review for you They've produced 18 different beers and they're mainly a mix of uh, German and Belgian styles of course and if you look through the list on Untapped there there's a few Belgian wits 
There's a few different lager beers and things like that as well. And uh, there's a Belgian blonde and things there too, from what I remember. But an interesting company, this one. One of the things you always find when you research the Japanese uh, breweries, quite often these little beer companies are like a smaller sidearm if you like of a bigger company as I was saying these guys are a sake company that's quite common in Japan actually that a lot of the sake companies will start to have a go at brewing beer as well but you get some really weird ones like there is a brewery somewhere that is part of a, a furniture company from what I remember and you know that's it's, it's really unusual that there's a craft I forget the, the name of that brewery exactly but there is one of the breweries and craft breweries in Japan who are part of a or are part of a furniture making organization so yeah you know there's some really strange things going on there but it is a bit difficult when you're researching the Japanese breweries as well to decipher you know what is the exact parent company everyone seems to own everyone else in Japan but an interesting company nonetheless the sake company seems to have stayed in the Yamakawa family for a good number of generations which is quite common and quite similar to a lot of the you know the family breweries that you'll find in Germany and stuff like this so um, yeah just check these guys out I think their beers are becoming more widely available from what I understand they are exported over to America as well so some of you guys watching over in the States might encounter these guys but they're fairly easy to find if you find any good craft beer shop in Japan but um, yeah that's all you really need to know about Ume Nishiki Yamakawa for the moment I'll put the brewery website in the description below and you can check that out, it is in Japanese so you will need Chrome to translate that for you probably unless you're watching in Japan but um, you can check out the Facebook and Instagram as well, that will keep you up to date with all the latest goings on and uh, it is a joint one between the sake brewery and the beer incidentally and you can check out the rate beer and untapped pages to see all the different beers and stuff that these guys have done so um, yeah let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself then so I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork of this one before we open it up incidentally all of the artwork that these guys um, produce, uh, or the, all of the artwork on these different beers, it's just exactly the same but different colours usually depending on what beer it is. There's a red one, a white one, a blue one, and I think, I want to say there's an orange or a green one as well. I'm sure I might have seen both of those actually. But there you can see, there's the little um, kind of pull cap on this. It's quite an interesting little thing that. I'll need to see if I can keep that for my collection. But um, yeah, it says on the side here, um, it's you know 100% pure malt and things like that, no adjuncts added to it. But um, yeah, 7% uh, Doppelbock this one, nicely presented. There's a phone number in a, a beer website. There is actually two websites for the brewery, I should have said that. There's, a, there's one for the beer side of things and there is also one for the sake brewery. So I'll put both of those in the video description for you below. But 330 milliliter bottle this one and um, you know it should be really quite interesting actually let's get this guy opened up and we will uh, we'll get it we'll get it printed there there you can see in the katakana it says bokku which is yeah their way of saying bok actually it's always quite funny because i know with some of the beer styles that you get there's a few different ways you can write um weizen in uh, in japanese katakana so you know you need to watch that sometimes when you're reviewing these these different beers but let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting again i'm really curious to see how this one turns out a seven percent doppelbock from shikoku cho in uh, ehime prefecture on shikoku island in japan yeah look at that that looks really nice actually so as you can see with this beer it's poured a very that's actually one of the darker doppelbox I've seen. It's almost the same colour as like a Schwarz beer or something like that. Um, but yeah, if you hold it up to the light, it is a very, this one's a very, very dark, you know, almost ebony rosewood colour actually. I didn't expect it to be quite as dark as that, I have to admit. But you can see there was a quarter finger of a frothy kind of very light sort of beige tanny head to this one. I'd say more a beige than a tan to be honest with you. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass there. A few little ones going up to uh, towards the, the bottom of that head there which has incidentally just faded away to be a very thin foamy layer. Um, but you know it's a bit darker than some other Doppelbox have come across. Usually the German ones are a little bit more a kind of mahogany colour. They're not too far away from the colour of the glass of this bottle to be honest with you. But um, you know, it's it's not out of the realms of possibility to have a Doppelbock that is a bit darker than that. Incidentally, these guys, when I was reading about what they do, um, they do tend to use German malts in their beers, so it probably will be um, kind of quite authentic, this one. And Germany does seem to have um, a good bit of an affinity with Japan, because, um, you know, I think Germany and Scotland were two of the nations that really helped Japan kind of industrialise after the Meiji Restoration and things like that. So Japan, there's, there's quite a few things um, 
between Japan and Scotland and Japan and Germany as well and they do seem to enjoy the German beer styles. There's a lot of cool cheese, there's probably more cool cheese in Japan than there is in Germany from these little GB Roo breweries. But nice looking beer this one and definitely not out with the realms of possibility um, in terms of its appearance. So let's take a closer look at the aroma and just see how we got on then. Ooh, that's quite nice actually. Um, it comes across as very well balanced to be honest. It actually um, I'm wondering if this will be like a, a single bock or if it will be like a kind of doppel bock because it's quite, um, it comes across as being quite bready to be honest with you. Um, that's really interesting actually. So straight away with this beer, you are going to notice it's got, it definitely has that German smoothness to it. I wouldn't be surprised if it's Weirman malt in here just going from the aroma, Weirman malt from Bamberg. But um, you can really smell a lovely brown bready base to this beer. Um, so yeah, lovely kind of brown bready qualities in there. Um, there's a little bit of a kind of toasty note to it, like a little bit of a charred black malt or something, but that's quite minimal, I would say. Um, perhaps a little bit, yeah, perhaps a little bit of a woody undertone too. There's not too much in the way of brown sugars. I mean, you can pick out like a, a kind of well-fired toasty caramel to this beer, but that really does take a bit of a back seat. There's a little bit of a biscuity sweetness in there also. Um, and I don't know, it's, it, this beer comes across as very smooth, to be honest with you. In terms of the aroma that I'm getting out of this beer, it actually comes across as being a little bit like a Czech Tmavi. Now, as I've told you, the Czech, the, the German lagers, the Doppelbock is a lager style of beer. It's just a very strong lager. Um, in Germany, you have the Helles, the Dunkel, and the, uh, the Schwarz beer. So the blonde lager, the sort of brown lager, and then the black lager basically. In the Czech Republic you've got the Svetli, um, the Leitzak, the Czerny and the Dunko. So the Svetli I believe is more like the Helles. You've got the Leitzak which is a little bit more like a Vienna lager, a kind of amber lager. Then you've got the Czerny which is the equivalent of the Dunkel and the Schwarzbier which is the equivalent of the, uh, oh, sorry, the Tamavi which is the equivalent of the Schwarzbier. So the Czech one, the Czech versions are always a little bit more kind of bready, if you like, whereas the German ones I find are a little bit more kind of crisp and sometimes a bit sweeter, to be honest with you, a little bit sweeter and smoother, if that makes sense, not quite as heavy in the bready flavours. This, the aroma of this beer and the way the malt base comes out in this one, it really does remind me of, you know, a Czech Tmavi, that more bready black lager kind of thing. Um, it really does come across kind of like that. Um, now the Bock beers, if we talk about Bock beers, they're a little bit more along the lines of, um, you know, it's just the way the malty qualities come out, they're quite biscuity and slightly more alcoholic than the lagers to be honest. They have the same kind of level of crispness from what I remember, but they do, they're a little bit more biscuity and, and um, just a bit higher in alcohol. So um, the Doppelbock, yeah, it is, as I say, it is a kind of lager beer and it's brewed, it's, uh, it's quite an interesting one, it is just a very, very strong to me, I would always say it's just kind of like a very strong Dunkel lager, to be honest with you. But to me, the aroma of this beer is a lot more like a, a Czech Tmavi, maybe a little bit like a German Schwarz beer as well, the more you smell of it. But um, yeah, so the malt base of this is really quite interesting. Um, on the hoppy side of things, it's kind of what you'd expect. You've got a little bit of that earthy quality in there that you get expected of the German Noble Hops, just a light, slightly sweet earthiness. You can pick out some nice floral characteristics as well, which again is reminiscent of the Hallertau and Tittenanger. It's quite a bright floral character, whereas, for example, with English hops, it's a little bit more kind of herbal, if you like. Um, but there's a little bit of grassiness in there, and there's a wee touch of... Um, you know, there's a wee touch of a red fruity quality to this beer as well. So it's a little bit... Um, yeah, there's a little bit of a kind of figgy note to this one, a little bit of a kind of candied strawberry or something like that, maybe a little bit of black currants and blackberries. So a really interesting aroma to this beer. It comes across very, very nicely, but I would say the aroma of this one is far more akin to a Czech Tmavi than a, than a Doppelbock or even a kind of single bock, to be honest with you. So I'm really curious just to see how this beer turns out. So um, yeah, let's have a go at this one then and see how we get on. So this one is the Umenishiki Bok from Umenishiki Yamakawa in uh, Shikoku-cho uh, in the northeast corner of Ehime Prefecture on Shikoku Island in Japan. Let's get stuck in. Slanja, Skull, Kampai. Yeah. 
Now, first off, this is a pretty nice beer. Um, it actually comes across as quite similar to some of the Swedish takes on the Doppelbock that I've had before. But there is there is definitely an element of a Czech Tmavi element to this. So it's quite interesting. Um, what you'll notice about this beer as well, just on that first sip, this beer really dries out in the middle of your palate and it starts to lean towards the roasty toasty side of things. And for me, a Doppelbock, it's far, it's more a kind of sweet, caramelly, brown, sugary beer. So this one to me is definitely more of a, a kind of tamavi, almost like a Schwarz beer kind of thing. But obviously a bit higher in alcohol. So that's a kind of interesting thing. And it's, it's unusual that actually that it's a... I mean, obviously the Japanese brewer that they have now, I guess, will kind of tinker with the recipes and stuff like this. But to me, this is definitely more tamavi like than it is doppelbock like to be honest. Although, as I think I've said the same about the Swedish um, doppelbox that I've tried recently. And I mean, in fairness to it, in the beginning, it really does have that kind of brown sugary element to it. And as your mouth adjusts to it more, you start to get more of that brown sugary quality out of it. But then later on in the aftertaste, it really dries out. So perhaps it's maybe fair to say that in the beginning, this is like a Doppelbock. But then when it dries out, it has a lot of um, kind of Czech Tmavi quality to it. I think that's probably a, a fair thing to say. Because if you think about the likes of the Eyinger Celebrator and stuff like that, that's a very, you know, it's a sweet beer. It doesn't really have the dryness and the, the bitterness from the black malts that you would normally get with um, with this beer, actually. So that's a, definitely an interesting point to uh, to make about this one, actually. So bear that in mind with this beer. But yeah, let's try and break the flavour of this one down then and see how we get on. So yeah, with this beer, when you take it in, it's going to come across as quite... Um, you know, quite sweet and, you know, be, it's almost, it's a mix of kind of tree, it's a sort of treacly molasses kind of thing. It is quite a, a sort of syrupy and dark brown sugar note you get out of this in the beginning. And that sits there in the very, very middle of your palate. You can really feel that and it goes further into the aftertaste. Um, but the further that you move into the aftertaste, you can feel the areas in the middle of your tongue around that. It just dries out and you start to get these almost... Um, black malty characters out of this one. Now it's not a straight black malt I don't think. Going by the flavours and the sort of smoothness that the black malt has, or that those roasty toasty elements has, it comes across as being, um, you know, it really it really comes across as being like it's kind of carafe malt. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a bit of carafe malt that's been used in here. But underneath that, of course, I've kind of gone about the malt base in a, in a reverse way as to what I usually do. But underneath that, you do get a nice sort of bread crusty quality to this one. It's got definitely got a bit of that kind of really roasty, well-fired um, bread crust to it, this beer, actually. So I really like how that, um, how that goes together in this beer. Yeah, this is a really, really... It's a really nice beer, this, generally. It just goes about its kind of desired style in a bit of a different way, but I like how that how it all comes together. So a really well-fired bread crust kind of form in the base of the beer. On top of that, you definitely get a little bit of a... It smoothens out a little bit. There's perhaps a little bit of a woody undertone to this one as well, but then you've got some toasty, you know, that roasty bread crust, you know, pushes its way out later on, and then in the centre of the palate, you've got that kind of... Um, you've definitely got that quite big syrupy and um, treacly molasses kind of brown sugar to this beer. It feels a bit darker this one compared to uh, a lot of the German takes on the Doppelbock that you'll find. Um, but on the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate you've got a nice little bit of a, an earthiness in there. And the earthiness feels a little bit darker in this compared to what you would normally get from like Hallertau or uh, Tetnanger hops and things like that. Um, so it does feel a little bit darker, but I think that's generally just because I think the, you know the carafe malt can have that impact. But as you come further forward along the sides of your tongue, it smoothens out a little bit. You get a nice little bit of floral aromaticity at the front corners of the palate, and then around the very front curve of the tongue, the beer is just that little bit lighter and grassy, which is what you would expect of um, of these nice noble hops. And then behind the front curve of the tongue, that's where you get that oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer.
So yeah, on the fruity side of things then, um, I would say this beer, it's got a teeny bit of sharpness to it, you know, maybe it has a little bit of a raisiny sharpness to it in the beginning, but then, you know, it's the, the main oily part of your, uh, the oily bubble behind the front of your tongue, it's quite, um, it's definitely got a little bit of a juicy figginess to it, and then the further you go into the aftertaste, you're going to get a little bit of a, um, you know, a little touch of a black currenty blackberry kind of thing coming off this. And I think, I'm sure they said they use Northern Brewer hops in this one as well. And Northern Brewer, from what I remember, can give you some really interesting little fruity qualities to the beer as well. So, I mean, overall, this is a really, really interesting take on the... Um, the Doppelbock style, um, it's it's like it's a Doppelbock in the beginning but then it's more like a checked Mavi in the aftertaste because the things that really linger there are some of the dark brown sugars, a little bit of the kind of roasty black malt and a wee bit of the red kind of fruity quality to it as well. So overall it's, um, it's a really interesting beer this one in terms of its flavour, it just goes about its style in a slightly different way if you like. Um, in terms of the mouthfeel, uh, I would say this is a it's a it's at the top end of mid bodied. Carbonation is quite smooth, um, but it does retain that element of drinkability to it. One of the things I've always said about Japanese beers is to the Japanese, beer is something that should be easily drinkable and this kind of maintains that um you know, it really kind of maintains that kind of quality if you like. Um so um, it does have a little bit of that crispness to it at the same time, but I'd say overall this is quite an oily feeling beer, this one. Um, as I said, the first Doppelbock that I've had from Japan, if memory serves me correctly, but it definitely comes across really quite nicely, I have to say. Um, in terms of the... In terms of the, the hoppy bitterness and stuff like that with this one, there is a bit of bitterness coming from the malt base in this as well, so I'd be tempted to say that this beer is maybe around the kind of... Um, 40 IBU mark, maybe something like that, which is a bit high for a Doppelbock because normally, like I say, <clears throat> the Doppelbock is quite a sweet beer and you do have an element of sweetness in the malt base as well. It's got a balance between the kind of roasty, um, bread crusty flavours and a bit of the brown sugar. Um, it's got a nice, uh, so the malt base is balanced in that sense, 40 IBUs I think with the hoppy side of things as well and you've got a nice little bit of a juicy fruit, a little bit sharp in the beginning but it just kind of mellows out a little bit and becomes more juicy the further you go into the aftertaste. But overall a really really interesting beer this one and um, I'm glad that I was able to finally try a German Doppelbock or a, a Doppelbock from Japan actually, a German style Doppelbock from Japan. So um, yeah I can see why Koji recommended this one to me, it is a really nice kind of interpretation of the style. Very similar actually to some of the Swedish um, Doppelbox that I've had recently, which is kind of interesting. Um, so yeah, a German Doppelbock in the beginning with the sweetness and stuff, but I think a little bit sort of checked Mavi-like in its aftertaste, to be honest with you. I think that's a good way to sum up this one. But um, yeah, really cool to try this brewery for the first time. I've heard some good things about this brewery, like I mentioned, um, so hopefully I can try a few more of their beers at some point in the future. I know they've got a Weizen and a few other kind of things, but I'll see if I can review one of the Belgian-style beers next, because I think that would be really quite interesting. So you will see some more reviews from these guys at some point in the future, I'm sure. So, um, yeah, let's just leave it at that. This one is the Umenishiki Bok from Umenishiki Yamakawa in um, Shikokucho. Ehime Prefecture in Japan. A really interesting beer, this one. And a big thank you again to Koji for recommending this one to me. My first ever review of a Japanese take on the German Doppelbox. So yeah, let's leave it at that. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, it's, uh, thank you for watching. You know, Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Umenishiki Yamakawa as well. And I'm sure we'll return to these guys at some point in the near future. Make sure you check out my social media. Make sure you check out some of these beers. And I will catch you guys very soon. Slanja, Skull, Kampai.